Hello, and thanks for joining us for Prepped and Polish Education and Inspiration. I'm your host, Alexis Avila, educator, online entrepreneur, and founder of tutoring test prep firm Prepped and Polished. Uh, we're in South Natick, Massachusetts. And uh, Prepped and Polished Education and Inspiration is your destination for groundbreaking insight from today's most influential educators, leaders, and minds on the planet. Our show is brought to you today by Wilsey Connections. My friend Pam Wilsey is a therapist for moms and teens and rolled out a new program for graduating seniors called Freshman 2.0 College Bound, and it helps ease the transition to college. Check out WilseyConnections.com with two L's on Wilsey for more info. Uh, and our show is also brought to you by Plan for College Videos. College planning expert Paul Hemphill has a wonderful series of college planning videos, over a hundred of them. And his videos ask all the questions with answers that parents don't know to ask. Parents don't know what they don't know, and the frustration ends with his videos. To learn more, go to www.planning-for-college.com forward slash videos. And get to know the Prepped and Polished community. You can find us on Facebook at Prepped and Polished as well as on Twitter uh, at Prepped Polished. And thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Joining our show today is speaker and New York Times bestselling author Harlan Cohen. Harlan's bestselling books include uh, The Naked Roommate and 107 Other Issues You Might Run Into in College. And Getting Naked, Five Steps to Finding the Love of Your Life While Fully Clothed and Totally Sober. Harlan shares his journey. Uh, and some struggles along the way. Uh, as a successful writer and popular speaker, inspiring millions of students to become more comfortable in their own skin. To our listeners, if you have any questions or comments, please send your questions to radio at preptandpolish.com or just leave a comment in the comment box. And we always appreciate hearing from you. Um, Harlan, thank you so much for joining us on Prepped and Polished Education and Inspiration. How are you today? Hey, it's great to be here. I'm excited. I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for the students and the parents who are their hearts are probably skipping a beat this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. They're skipping skipping a beat every time. <laughs> um, yeah. So Harlan, a lot of our t- listeners are teens. Um, what were you like uh, as a child and teen? When I was a child and teen, I was overweight. Um, I was short. Uh, I was hairy. Not extraordinarily hairy, like a character, you know, on a, uh, in like a, a movie, um, so like, the other channel was kind of dated. But, you know, just, just a, a hairier kind of guy. Short, hairy, uh, big ears, uh, fat. <laughs> a lot of me to love. How's that? A lot of you to love. Sound attractive? <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> I, um, I actually, I, I had a, I had a nice time as a kid, but I, I was a little awkward. I was uncomfortable. It took me a little while to, um, to become, you know, so tall at five, six and, um, to, um, just, you know, get comfortable in my skin. And that's why I love doing what I do. Cause, uh, I think college is an amazing time because you can really, you can really define your life and be whoever you want to be. So, um, who you were before. Well, shape who you're going to be, but um, it doesn't have to be who you are. Oh yeah, it's a huge uh, transition um, at the college age. So I definitely agree with yeah, that. Yeah, you know, that's you know, those are my physical attributes. But um, academically, you know, I did okay. I was actually going through my basement. My parents were moving. I was looking through some old report cards, and um, you know, I had some rough. I had some rough patches. Like I, I never loved being in class. Um, I had a hard time reading and uh, getting through the materials. Mm-hmm. Um, I love doing things after school. I, mean, I love performing and speaking and, and, you know, that part of it. But I just I wasn't a great student. Um, I was a decent tester. And um, I was kind of that guy who I was telling, telling my, my wife that after going through our boxes, you know, I just felt kind of stupid. And um, I know it's it's kind of funny and I've written all these books, but I mean like my self image as a kid was just someone who I didn't think I was that attractive. I didn't think I was that smart. And then I went to college. Somehow I made it. Mm-hmm. And um then uh you know years later I realized that I am smart and um 
I am, you know, really, uh, I think, you know, talented in many ways. And, um, and I'm attractive. And I'm good looking. Mm-hmm. I mean, shocking. So I don't think, I think how I described myself earlier in this interview is really not who I was, but it was right. the self-image that I projected. And, um, that's, that's something that I think a lot of uh, our students struggle with. Definitely. And who were some of your major influences when you think about growing up? I'm really lucky. I have two parents who are incredible, uh, incredibly supportive. And uh, my brother's eight years older, my brother's five years older. So my family really has been key. Um, once I was in college, I came across some amazing people who really helped shape my future. And this is one of the things I always recommend when students are going through the search and selection process is to really identify people and places on campus where you can find connections. Because one of my places was the college newspaper, and one of the people who had a tremendous influence on me was the advisor of the campus newspaper, um, and then the people within the School of Journalism. So those became really influential people when it came to my career path and supporting me um, as, I, as I took a very non-traditional route. Wow. And, and you went to Indiana, a pretty big school, yeah? Yeah, I went to Indiana. I started at UW-Madison. And I ended up transferring, which was okay. really shocking to me that I transferred because uh, I I never planned on that happening, and both my brothers never transferred, and I again was 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 really confused. But Alexis, well, what I've learned over the years, and I share this in the Naked Roommate, and there's also a book for parents, the Naked Roommate for Parents Only, is that the problem when it comes to this whole college journey. Uh, is that we focus on search and selection. You know, the big, the, 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 of course, search, you know, where am I going to go out of these, you know, thousands of options? And then selection, after I've been admitted, where am I going to choose to go? That's pretty much all high schools emphasize. But there's a third part called transition, which is, I think, the most important part of the college experience. It's the most intense, the most emotional. And it's really where students either thrive or struggle. And as an expert on transition, I really have identified how students can find their way, how they can create connections. And it's the things they do during transition that can be incorporated and need to be incorporated into search and selection so that students can find the right fit and don't have to transfer. Oh, definitely. That's amazing. Um, now, when you read your books um, and and uh, and and listen to your speeches and videos, there's there's like a refreshing honesty, transparency that you just throw throw to us. And I, I'm wonder, I was wondering, have you always been that way? Uh, I think I've been more honest as as I get a little bit older, okay, and um, and just become more and more comfortable with who I am. But it's it's hard to be honest. And it's not yeah. something we teach in school. Um, you know, even the uncomfortable parts of life. High school is all about protecting teenagers from uncomfortable. And yes. it's, really, it's really not fair. You know, the social and emotional and the physical, you know, we don't really know how to navigate that part of life. And it takes going through college. It takes really looking inside and, exploring who we are socially and emotionally and work our best to physically to really get to that point where we can be vulnerable. Uh, so what I do is try to give students a shortcut. So when it comes to the social and emotional parts of transition, uh, they can struggle a lot less and get a lot further. And that's what Naked Roommate does and, and, and you know, the parent book and, and my dating book too. Definitely. And, you know, you, it it sounds like you have always been pretty ambitious because to go from you know writing for the for the, for the student paper in Indiana to you know putting out these books, uh, you, I noticed on your website you had to you pitch those to like over fifty media sources. So you have to be pretty ambitious to do something like that to get. Yeah, you know, there's always been a burning desire to to. Um, share a message. Now, the writing part is just a means to be able to share a message. I, the writing part drives me, you know, nutty because I, I just, 
I have a hard time sitting and, and sure. doing it. And but, but I get it. I get through it because I love being able to communicate something, something big, and having something I'm passionate about. And that's really where that idea of passion. Students who have passion, parents who can encourage students to be passionate about something. And it doesn't have to be in the classroom. It's just something that they can be passionate about. Mm -hmm. A student who can have that passion and continue to nurture that passion can really help drive them on this path so that when they make this next transition, if they have something they're passionate about, it always gives them, it always gives them some direction. It always gives them places to go. It always gives them people who they can get connected with. Um, I see so many students who are in high school and they have a great burning desire for something and the parents or their friends really discourage them mm -hmm. for a number of reasons, which is, I think, tragic. Uh, so as someone who's passionate and has always had a fire, who struggled academically at times, it's that passion and that burning desire that really carry us through and help us to be able to get where we want to go. So I'll tell you another thing, Alexis, is I am great at rejection. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am, I, I, I don't love rejection. I hate rejection. I think it's awful and it's painful. And sure. It, it makes me want to throw up. <laughs> uh, really exciting to get rejected. It's awful. But right. what I've learned over the years is to, is to build the emotional stamina to handle the rejection. That's part of being a passionate person. And again, those are things that I think we could do a much better job with, uh, when it comes to, College search, college selection, and transition as well as you know, how do we how do we create the dynamics so that we can be passionate and handle whatever comes our way? Oh yeah, you're definitely tackling the deep issues here. That's that's what makes you you, man. That's great. Well, um, gritty. It's gritty, but we don't do that. And that's, you know, we we don't we we just don't emphasize that stuff. High yeah. school's all academic, academic, and that's only one part of that transition that we're going to discover that we we have to navigate. And you know, I actually have a I have a, an online course. It's a free online course. Oh, uh, nice. To help students to go through the search process and also for parents. And people can, can find all that at, at Harlan Cohen, H-E-R-L-A-N-C-O-H-E-N dot com. So. Perfect. So, yeah, Harlan Cohen. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Just another bonus. Um, now, the, your first book that went bestseller, I believe, was The Naked Roommate? That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's been a couple of times. So... The Naked Roommate, this is a book I've read, and it's one I, I bought for a few students who I really liked and I thought deserved it. Um, now, what do you think it was about The Naked Roommate and, and 107 other issues you might run into in college that resonated with, with the mass audience? Well, I, I have a good sense, but I want to just let listeners know real quickly how the book's constructed, because I think that's really going to provide some insight into why it has such an impact. And this book, I, I wrote it because I wanted to help students to get a really realistic idea of what this college experience is. So I interviewed over a thousand students from, from hundreds of campuses while I'm on the road. I said to students, hey, if you could go back in time and give yourself a tip, what would you tell you and what nice. is the story? So that's really, you know, the hook of that. Students opened up. They were really vulnerable. They did anonymously. And it was this candid, insight into the parts of the college experience that we never talk about mm -hmm. that really hit a nerve. And then I combined some facts and stats and resources that are trusted and I'm always updating it. So this combination, and it's funny. Like I could be a funny guy sometimes. I don't know how funny I've been. But, <laughs> um, but like, you know, I can be, I, they like to laugh. So the combination of being funny and being emotional and providing a backbone of really trusted content mm -hmm. have created this this book that's become this this you know kind of what to expect. Um, and every year it, we sell more books, and it's now a not only is there a book, there's a workbook, mm -hmm. and a whole first year curriculum to help students transition and to also help high school students prepare for transition. And, and it's used in fifth, like over 50 college courses or something? You know, it's probably even, yeah, you know, it's really hard for us to track all of them, but I know it's, you know, there's been well over a hundred schools that have used the book and 
Um, sometimes they'll use it in small sections. Sometimes they'll use it as the common read for all the students. But again, it's it's about it's about helping these colleges and universities to address the social and emotional issues that so many students struggle with. I mean, when students end up not staying in a school, the financial part, yeah, that's that one of the common areas, but it's the social and emotional. Mm-hmm. And I think also a student who knows how to take risks, a student who has a burning desire and a passion to, to be in a certain place and to follow a certain path, if they put themselves in the right places and they connect with the right people, they can find ways to pay to pay their way through college or to minimize the uh, load that they have to take on in terms of loans. Um, it's it's too many times the mentality is what can you do for me as opposed to what can I do for myself and how can I do it and who are the people who are doing things I want to do and how they've been able to do it. And those are the students who, uh, who are unstoppable throughout this whole process. Wow. Do you find that, um, cause you wrote it several years ago, do you find that college students today are facing the same challenges they did back when you wrote, wrote The Naked Roommate? Yeah, well, the good news is about these books, I update them every two years. Oh, great. So, um, so I'm always like, you know, I'm in the weeds with the students and with the parents and with the administrators and with the counselors. So, you know, the, the big thing that's come about is I think I've seen students who are more risk averse. Um, because of technology and also because of the role of parents, uh, students don't have to be self-advocates as much. Um, you know, other people are clearing the path for them. And when it comes to technology, you can share your feelings without having face-to-face communication. Um, you yeah. can get what you want without really having to take the, the, the risks that we had to take in the past. I think students are just, you know, they suck at risk-taking and they're horrible when it comes to Handling rejection, and I've seen it progressively get worse over the years. Yeah, that makes sense. You can see my my uh, my language is very academic. <laughs> <laughs> but I find also like talking like a real person is really helpful. Absolutely, it would. Well, you're on the right show. Um, now you do a lot of speaking, Harlan. Um, you travel uh, coast to coast. You speak to college students all over uh, uh, nation. Um, you said that you really get a kick out of it out of the live audience. What, what do you enjoy about when speaking to students live? And, and tell us about that guitar you bring along with you. Yeah, yeah, I play the guitar. I play my roommate's do. It's a good little tune. And I started playing guitar because when I would speak originally, many years ago, um, I don't think I had a really strong program. <laughs> and, and students like to laugh. They don't like to listen to someone talk. So it was fun to just mess around on the guitar and, you know, I was awful. And I'm mm-hmm. still, I'm still just like, I'm not a good singer, mm-hmm. but, um, I, I can, I can do enough to make it entertaining. I think there's also something cool about seeing someone who stinks, mm-hmm. like entertaining you. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> it makes you feel like you could be better and you can do anything. So part of, part of, part of it is like communicating, listen, you just <laughs> do what you love and, and you put it out there. Um, when it comes to the speaking, I mean, being out there, talking to students, having dinner with them, doing workshops, spending an afternoon, really getting to know them. I mean, that's how you really get a sense of what students are facing, what students are struggling with, how they're overcoming their fears, who are the players who are causing uh, um, adversity in their lives. What are the administrators doing? What's the climate on these campuses? How are they dealing with their financial strains? Um, what are their recruitment strategies? What, str- what, what big issues are they dealing with inside and outside the classroom? So, you know, talking about is, is, is fine and, um, sharing information in books is, is great. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's nothing that compares to physically being in that environment and experiencing what it's like to be on a beautiful campus on the most disgusting day in February during midterms. Okay. I mean, (laughs) that's the gritty real story that you don't see in the college brochures. And that's where I get to be. And then I can share and report on it. So, I mean, I love it. I mean, that, that part is just, that's, I feel something that really differentiates me from anyone who's doing this is that I'm spending 
you know, I don't know, a hundred days on the road, really living the experience as much as I possibly can. That's awesome. Have Without you, living in a residence house, I will not, I stay, I do not stay on campus. I, that's one thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's just to the smells. Just got to draw the line somewhere. You uh, know, there has to be somewhere, right? You know, like yeah. <laughs> so Harland, have you have you ever had any backlash from from some of the stuff you put out? Like, uh, uh, I guess people use throw this word around, but haters or like angry, uptight parents who are just like you know, who's this guy who's just saying that we should be naked? Um, right. Well, you know. you know, I don't encourage nudity. It's more of just sort of the parents listening. You know, I mean, nudity. I think nudity with someone if you're married, married nudity. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the trusting partner is great. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's more about exposing, exposing the truth and being real. And, and yes, there are yeah. people that are, it's very minimal, okay. uh, the backlash I get because the way that I, the way that I construct my message is that, uh, if you have something that you want to share, let me know. You know, I encourage you. When you say I hate you, I say thank you for being so honest. What can I do to, to what can I do to make things better? I mean, I, I'm not going right. to hate you back and inflame you because if I can get a reaction from you, then there's something you're reacting to, and I want to understand that. That comes that goes hand in hand with that being great with rejection. Um, I like feedback, even critical feedback. It's painful and it hurts, but, but I like it. Um, I know that when a parent is attacking me for sharing the truth, there is oftentimes something going on within that parent's life yeah, and I want to understand that. So it frustrates me when someone doesn't love what I do or hates me without telling me, I just want to get it so that I can process it and evaluate and understand where the, where the problem is. Awesome. Harlan, you're, you're a national syndicated columnist um, and have a fabulous community. And, and you named it the Getting Naked Experiment um, to help the world find happiness and love in life. Um, what yes. kinds of things do you do on uh, – what kinds of things do you got going on on your blog? And, and who's part of your community? Well, the, so the Getting Naked Experiment is a uh, call to action. It's part of my, my dating book, my dating and relationship book. And mm-hmm. basically that, that site and that call to action is all about – saying what you think and doing what you feel and being authentic because we live in a world when it comes to dating and relationships where basically we learn to hide our feelings to avoid saying what we think and to not do what we feel unless we're really drunk or it's safe. And I don't encourage that. I mean, I highly discourage that, but that's really the reality of the world we live in. The more people um, drink, uh, the more uh, they tend to be honest with their feelings, uh, the more comfortable it is in terms of knowing I'm, I, it's safe for me to take risks, uh, I'm not going to get rejected, uh, people tend to share their feelings. So the Getting Naked Experiment is all about saying what you think, doing what you feel, understanding no matter what, it's going to be all right, and actually doing it while while sober and mostly clothed. Mostly sober, mostly clothed. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I would say the website, so my advice column, Help Me Harlan, Help Me Harlan uh, is my advice column at harlancone.com. Uh, everyone can read uh, my advice. Mm-hmm. And I've been writing my advice column since I was in college, and uh, that's something I do on a regular basis. That's uh, is always fresh and, and new, and I'm happy to answer any questions through that site as well. Awesome. And I, I read that you've always wanted to be a, a columnist. And uh, have you do, you do you have any peers that you kind of look up to who are columnists, like? You know, or are you kind of just doing your own? You know, in terms of advice, um, you know, I, I've always, I've, I think Dan Savage is really an interesting guy, and he's a really good entrepreneur. He's a smart man. Mm-hmm. He started his advice column um, in Seattle years ago, and I uh, think he's a good guy. And um, some of the other advice columnists, you know, I, I appreciate that. Most of them are women, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, from Carolyn Hacks to... Uh, um, to um, the long list of all you know more than I do. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting art that whole tune I mean, I always like uh, Ann Landers before she passed away. I was oh. fortunate enough to share a page with her 
in the New York uh, Daily News for a while, which is pretty wild. But um, I like those columnists. I think it's a really interesting form, and um, I've been doing it doing it for years and, and love it. So cool. Um, so the bridge from teenage to young adulthood is exciting, but it's it's confusing. It's daunting. Um, to any teen who may be listening to this podcast today, hearing you, what piece of advice would you have for him? Well, I would say to first be patient. Um, you know, thirteen to eighteen is brutal. It really is, and everything gets better the more you, the more space you have uh, after eighteen. It's like you, you just you just appreciate and understand so much more. 13 to 18 is really tough, and it's confusing. Um, and the way to be able to navigate that confusion is to focus on passion. You know, passion mm-hmm. really rises above the confusion. And you find something you love to do. You find a couple things you love to do. Ideally, you find, like, three things you love to do. And then you let that be the guide so that you could find your, your people and you could find your places. And finding your places means finding the right campus, finding the right community where you can be able to continue to do the things you're passionate about and then reaching out to people along the way who can help you and guide you and lead you. So being patient and having places and reaching out to people is really the formula to be able to navigate transition and to just be happy. And that's when I look back at my journey, that's what it was. It was discovering this passion finding the right places where I can do what I love to do and then reaching out to the people who could help me and the people who I would pay to help, people who volunteer to help, people who enlist to help. And and then and then you end up on a path that's just I mean, it's a crazy, wild, unbelievable path. I mean you don't need drugs when you do this. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <Because> it, <laughs> is tri- it is it is it is a trip. It's, it's a trip. If you if, if if you're not listening to your heart, if you're not doing what you feel, if you're not saying the things you need to say, if you're not surrounding yourself with people who you can trust and talk to, well, then it becomes really too painful to live a really authentic life and to let your 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 heart lead you. And that's really what I try to do, and, and I'm always I'm I'm in people's corner. So for those teenagers who are listening. I'm here. I love to help. Fallingcone.com. My books, my website, my videos. You know, let Absolutely. me know if you, if you need advice. I'm always I'm always out here, and I really am very responsive. Uh, if I don't respond to you fast enough, just write in the subject line. I thought you cared because <laughs> I because I, I do care. I just I just get busy. All right, we'll hold hold that too. Um, well, thank yeah. you. Well, thank you so much, um, Harlan. You know, I, personally, thanks for your honesty and, and bravery for putting yourself out there first and foremost, and just the empowering work you do. Well, I will continue to do it, and I encourage others to do the same. Thanks for what you do. I appreciate you having me, and um, and I hope this will help students. And I look forward to continuing this relationship with everybody who's listening. Awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, you bet. Uh, this wraps up our show with uh, New York Times bestselling author Harlan Cohen. We'll get to know uh, Harlan's work and the work he does helping millions of people around the world get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Please visit, and I'm going to spell it. It's www.harlancohen.com. Thank you for joining us on Practical Polish Education and Inspiration. <laughs>